Hello and welcome to episode 6 today of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode for the Canadian Grand Prix today. It's been a while, but we're back. It's been literally over a month, I'm so sorry. Um, I've been very busy, I've been doing my, well, things really. Um, we've got only two days in between uh, from Azerbaijan to Canada. So we're only going to do our little, uh, our little focus upgrade for the teammate, of course, who is very important to us. Uh, last race, we had a fucking blast at Azerbaijan. We finished in fourth place, bringing us up to P6, actually, in the Drivers' Championship, which is huge, bringing us to 27 points, of course, after our podium at the season opener in Bahrain. Now, before this race begins, we are quickly going to be taking an ICE penalty, because we're simply already running out of things we can well, equip and do, and we don't. We just don't have durability, so we're gonna have to take, take a whole lot of penalties throughout the entire season, starting with today on the ICE. We're also gonna do a minor DRS upgrade, which should help us after it comes in. There's still this little weird glitch with the uh, the R and D. I don't know why it's not been fixed, but we also do a control electronics upgrade because it's a big issue to our team for some reason. I've always had issues with the CEs, and we only get two, so we really need that. Of course, I'm going to spend 50k on 1,000 team acclaim. I mean, we have plenty of cash. We have 3.9 million. So nobody really cares. But we're here for the Canadian Grand Prix. Let's go to practice. Here we are then after practice. We've, of course, got all of our resource points. We don't fill these. And we've got our usual development boosts. And as I've mentioned in the previous episodes, Canada is my favorite track all time on the F1 game. So we should definitely have a good run here. Now, of course, we do have a penalty, so qualifying doesn't really matter. We are probably very likely going to be starting at the back of the grid. But it's going to be important nonetheless, because I think there might be some rain forecast, actually, for the qualifying on the Saturday. So it could even change up some things. Maybe it even comes in during a session, so we can put out a lap on soft still while the others have to go on inters because they're staying in. I don't know. I've done it before. I don't know if it's what's going to happen today. We'll just have to see. We're going up in the acclaim, almost hitting level 10, meaning we can almost get a new sponsor, which is very exciting. But here we are then in qualifying, and the rain is indeed here. We are out on the soft compound tire, in the rain, going past the wall of champions, actually. But it's so close. It's so wet out here. But I have managed to get a lap in on the softs, meaning that for now, it's going to be P4 behind Norris and Vettel. But because the rain is here... Because we're still on softs, we might actually have a free entry into Q2 here. But here we are then, we go out for another lap just to be sure. Still on softs, right after, but I actually spin the car around into the wall and it's a DNF for us, we hit the wall. Tire is off and everything, it's gonna be a retirement for us in Q2 here. But we did actually get through to the, to the top 16 shootout, so I don't know what happens there. We're down to P22. Because the rain stopped, the track actually dried up. So we're in P22, behind Jack Aitken even. The has of Mick Schumacher is up in P16. He's going to the top 16 shootout. But we are out after that crash, which is just horrendous. I thought I'd go out for another lap during that qualifying session because the rain was going away slowly. So I didn't go in and actually went for a second lap after that first one, but it was too much. So I've decided that we're going to take an entire row of penalties on literally everything. Gearbox, the entirety of the power unit. We're in P22 anyway, it doesn't really matter. We're here for the race, let's go. Welcome to the Ile Notre Dame once again for what promises to be another incredible Canadian Grand Prix and a fiercely competitive circuit where pole position can often be decided by less than a tenth of a second. With top speeds of around 210 miles per hour heading into the overtaking opportunity of turn 13, the 2.7 miles of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve are some of the quickest on the Formula One calendar. There are 14 corners in total with 60% of the lap taken at full throttle and average lap speeds clock in at about 130 miles per hour. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of turn one. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? There are three main things to worry about there, Crofty. Positioning, awareness, and discipline. First, you have to put your car in a bit of space and make sure you have room to react to what the others are doing. Then you have to watch your mirrors and listen to the sounds around you to get a sense of where everyone is. And finally, just don't get too greedy. Just because a gap exists doesn't always mean you should go for it. 
Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fence starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Leclerc, Sainz, Pierre Gasly and Norris, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Verstappen, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Esteban Ocon, Perez, Vettel, Lance Stroll and Russell, Mick Schumacher, Latifi, Antonio Giovinazzi and Nikita Mazepin. Raikkonen, Ricardo, they've taken a grid penalty. Aitken and the Rainmaster. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Welcome back to Montreal then, here we are for the race here through Canada, all the way at the back of the grid, of course, taking all our grid penalties, but we are not the only one. Max Verstappen and Daniel Ricciardo both have a penalty as well. We're going to be slightly underfueling the car as the rain is coming towards the end of the race, so it could turn out to be something else. Here we are then at the five red lights. It's a pretty good start for us already, besides Ri Ricciardo. Eight on our left, who had an even better start, but we're gonna dive down the inside at turn one then fighting Raikkonen and trying something around the outside here, which I do quite a lot actually on the first lap around Canada here. Not quite making it work here, we're already up into P17 then, overtaking five cars off the five red lights. We've got the Haas, I think that is on our right, yep, the Haas of Mazepin actually, is doing a massive job in P18 with his Haas. And we're gonna dive down the inside of his teammate Mick Schumacher here, also overtaking Latifi in the process, going up into P15 already, so we're doing a massive job. But Schumacher has the overspeed and a better exit, so he's gonna be on our inside again on the next turn. We're gonna have to give him space. But he decides to slot right behind us and stay behind us as we chase Russell down into the very first hairpin of the race. Onto the straight, then still behind Russell, of course, still on lap one. We've done seven overtakes thus far on this first lap of the 35, so we're doing a massive job. And we're gonna be taking over overtaking Russell right before the chicane. Making sure we don't make any contact with the Wall of Champions, of course. And we're going to chase both of the Aston Martins now. First Stroll and then Vettel will be the next. But here we are, back into turn one. On to lap two, and we're still behind Stroll. But if we... Oh, we actually have some overspeed there. Or, not overspeed, oversteer. And we slide the car through. But on lap three, then we've got DRS now. So our overtake on Stroll is going to be even easier as we improve our best lap time by 10 seconds, of course. Because this was the second lap. We're behind Stroll now, we've got the DRS, we see the two Red Bulls actually up the road. I don't know what happened to Perez, he wasn't there on the grid I'm pretty sure. As we actually cut the corner accidentally, but shit happens. But we're behind Stroll, are we gonna go to try and make a dive bomb here? Are we actually make it where I can make some contact with the home Grand Prix driver? But we have the DRS still, he also has the DRS though, probably still off L. But he is still on our inside here. We're Trying to give him space to actually make some contact if we spit out straw and I don't think that's the first time we've done that in our career mode here. We once again accidentally spin out straw. I'm so sorry, we didn't get any penalties, only a warning. But remember, I decided to start on the mediums and all these guys are on softs and we still have overspeed. So we are actually doing a massive job here. As I, I don't know what I was doing on the chicane here. I tried to overtake Vettel but it, it really didn't work out as we see Gasly and Sainz both in the pits for an early stop. They probably started on softs. I don't know why they're in so early. It's like really early even for the softs. And here we are then on lap 13 as we are now going to be making our stop. We were all the way up into P7. But the time has come for our mediums to go. We're gonna go onto another set of mediums I'm pretty sure. As it's definitely a two-stop here around Montreal. We're gonna be making a pretty quick stop of course. But we're gonna be dropping all the way down back behind Vettel and Aitken even. And I... I'm pretty sure Aitken hasn't stopped yet, so he's definitely going to be going further back. As Russell and Schumacher also overtake us, we're going to re-overtake them as they go through turn two. As we actually come out right besides George Russell, but of course we have new tires. We have more grip, we have the straight line from the pit street, so we have the better exit here. As we're now up into P9 on lap 23 already, it's been a really boring race thus far. We're gonna make a pretty clean move around Alonso here, as we do make a little bit of contact, I'm pretty sure. We're back fighting Vettel in P8 now, trying to get into P7 as Alonso is still behind us and not giving up the fight yet. He really wants that position, but he's not gonna get it if it's up to me. As we approach the hairpin, of course, we're gonna get our DRS on the straight, that's for sure. 
but we need to find a way to get past Vettel to get some good points again. The P4 in Azerbaijan might have been special, but we can do it again around here if we're a bit lucky. We had the penalty, so it's gonna be hard. We can do it, as Alonso has massive overspeed actually, using our slipstream to his best advantage. Trying to overtake us before the chicane, we're not gonna be easy to overtake, we're gonna pinch him off there. Maybe making a little bit of contact with his front wing, I'm not sure, but there's more people in the pits. Perez, Tsunoda and Vettel actually went in as well, but our pit time has also almost come. And on lap 31, we have stretched this stint all the way until the rain, and the rain is now very much here, as Vettel is gonna be overtaking us on our right. And our time still hasn't come for Inters. It's still not wet enough. And the clock is ticking. We've got four laps to go. We need to make another pit stop because we've only done two sets of mediums. So we didn't even follow the tire regulations. So either we go in for softs now and take the risk. Or we keep waiting for the intermediates. And risk, well, losing our entire race pretty much. But on lap 32 then, the time has come for me. I'm going to make the choice to go to intermediates. I think the rain is going to get much, much worse. And we're going to get a Russia 2021, uh, well, replay, really. So we're going to go on to Inters. We're the only people going on to Inters, but I really don't have a choice. So we're taking a huge gamble here, going all the way down to P13 as Ricciardo now overtakes us as well. It's going to be three laps of absolute carnage if it's up to me. We need to overtake all these people. We need to get some points here. I can't keep telling you that Canada is my favorite Grand Prix and then not get any points. We've got 0.1 laps in the fuel minus, but we should be good here, uh, especially because the rain is here. And as you can see, the track is now actually getting wet. We are very much in a transfer period and onto lap 34 then, the rain is here. Intermediates are definitely the faster tire now, as we're gonna try to make a move on Ricciardo around the outside here, not quite fix it. As we actually need to brake almost to not make contact with his rear there, as he's very slow on those slick tires. As we go into this little bit of a stretch cane, I'm not really sure how to call it. It's a really high speed corner normally on the slicks. And of course, as we're in the rain, we're gonna be taking it slow. But here we are then, two laps to go, 10 seconds to Vettel, but because the rain is here and the slicks are so bad, we are going into the hairpin as Daniel Ricciardo is actually out of the session. I don't know what happened there. We didn't get to see it. Um, I think he might have spun out, if I remember correctly. I think he spun out because his slicks, of course, in the rain and it's just, it's so slippery around. We've got eight seconds to Vettel now. There's another lap to go, one more overtake this but we see Vettel overtake Alonso he is 30 seconds he's five seconds and he's there actually we almost made contact with the Spaniard who I think have made some contact with the wall of champions there very unfortunate but this rain is actual carnage actually looking a lot like Russia 2021 which was of course huge carnage for Lando Norris especially of course who lost his first Grand Prix win there but Vettel is now only two seconds ahead. The rain is serious. The slicks don't do anymore. As we're going to be making an easy move on Vettel around the outside here. Taking the inside line on the next corner. As we're now into P10. We've got one point. Two Alpha Tories ahead of us. We can still get more points. Seven seconds might seem like a lot. But in these conditions you make up about ten seconds a lap. If not more. And there's yellow flags ahead. And it's Lando Norris who has spun it out. It really is a repeat of Russia 2021 as Lando Norris once again loses his race due to not pitting for intermediates under the rain. And there are the Alpha Tories. We can take two more positions then on the last straight, through the last chicane, and onto one last straight. It's two seconds to Pierre Gasly. Now they're fighting each other, which is definitely not helping them. But it's going to be really, really hard to overtake these guys just before passing the finish. Carlos Sainz actually wins the Grand Prix with his Ferrari. So that's a huge accomplishment from the Ferrari. But here we are then on the left of the two Alfa Tauris, And we are going to overtake them. Our intermediates are that much better. And it's going to be P7 for us in this Canadian Grand Prix. Huge, huge, huge accomplishment if you ask me. That was a great race from P22. We get driver today. Well deserved of course. Huge strategy choice there. Huge usage of our mediums. Let's go to the podium. Great performance from the entire team to secure victory here in Canada. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? 
Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Here come our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. Big congratulations then to Ferrari and Carlos Sainz. If you remember, it was a Mercedes front row lockout actually at the start of the Grand Prix, and Carlos Sainz drove all the way from P4 to P1 there to take the win. The Red Bulls are off the podium. It's not a good race for them, really. We finish in P7, taking some good points. Jack Aitken got a five second penalty and ended up in P20. And Mick Schumacher actually in P13 there, doing a massive job bringing his Haas up. And I've mentioned it in the previous videos. The Haas are actually going up quite fast. We might actually see them overtaking Alfa Romeo, maybe, Alpine. We're gonna have to see. I'll keep you updated on the next video, of course, because I'm really excited to maybe see Haas up there. Williams overtake Alfa Romeo in the constructor standings. We're still stuck in P6. We're closing up on Alfa Tori and McLaren, which could become a very, very close fight. And I just want to show you this instance list. This was a messy, messy race. Jack Aitken actually made some contact with Mazepin on the last lap, probably because of the rain, of course, and still the sixes were the only people on intermediates doing a massive job. But here we are then, our rivalry with Nicholas Latifi is looking quite good. Of course, our car is much better. I'm a much better driver than him, if I may just say that. So we're 17 to 10 then with four races remaining. We're going to be getting that acclaim to get us to level 10. So next episode, we will be signing a new secondary sponsor, which is very exciting. So we'll be making more money and we'll be able to improve our car even further. But that has been it then. Thank you for watching the Canadian Grand Prix, my favorite. Next episode, we will be going, I think, to Austria. I'm not 100% sure. Um, we'll see, I guess. Probably Austria, maybe something else. We'll see. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.